Heather Hakes. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited to share with you my process of mindset and manifesting, and I'm offering you a free gift. If you want to learn how to manifest more money now, I've created a free video training that you can grab at my website, heatherhakes.com. Again, it's a free video training on manifesting money at heatherhakes.com. Here we go. Welcome to today's interview. I've brought on Heather Wild Smith. Heather, welcome. Hi. Uh, this is funny. I actually just recently on Instagram, somebody reached out to me. There's actually a podcast for Heathers. Did you know this? No. She literally, so it's another Heather and she interviews only Heathers. And so I just, I found that was fascinating. <gasps> wow. I love it. So I'd love first, if you could give the listeners a little background, where do you live and what do you do? So I live about an hour north of Atlanta, Georgia, and I am a sales coach for transformational coaches and healers um, who hate sales. <laughs> and I help them. I help them discover their own way of selling that feels really good and really genuine to them, so that they can show up, make the sales, and change lives. So I think it's interesting that both I feel sales and money people have a lot of stigma, a lot of resistance around, but. Mm -hmm. I guess if people realized everything is sales, dating is sales, mm. obviously interviewing for a job is sales. And so mm. I'm curious question for you. Why do you think entrepreneurs or business owners feel so yucky with sales? There's a couple of different reasons. There's first off, we've had bad experiences with sales. Um, there's a lot of negative stereotypes, you know, in popular culture and, um, and just that we pick up from our family. Um, I rewatched the show Cheers with my dad this summer. And I realized that a lot of my negative stereotypes about corporations and rich people actually came from the show Cheers. <laughs> I didn't, didn't realize it. Um, but part of it is that I, I, I was just having this conversation yesterday with another coach with very similar ideas about sales that I have. And I, I think that there's a lot of really crappy ways to sell out there. There's some great ways to sell and there's some people that are really doing it great and really teaching people how to do it great. But I've invested in five big programs and only one of them had a way of selling that I felt kind of comfortable with. And ultimately I just had to cook, like make, make my own. And so what happens, I think a lot is that, you know, people have these negative ideas and they have some negative um, mindsets and limiting beliefs around sales anyway. And then they go and they spend thousands of dollars on these sales and business courses and the ways that they're being taught to sell don't feel good. And the people won't help them tweak it. They're just like, no, it's just your success issues. It's just your money issues. And you start to think, well, I keep investing and I keep seeing, and it's all the same crap regurgitated. And so maybe there's just not a good way to sell. And, um, that's, it was a combination of mindset plus you can do all mindset in the world, but if the strategy isn't aligned for you, it's, it's not going to feel good. And I had to finally do all the mindset work as well as creating a strategy that felt really good to me. And then I was able to break through and start selling high ticket and start doing the work that I'm really here to do. So, okay. So a couple things to note there. Number one, I feel that's important to know is that well, you became aware of it, but if we don't understand our subconscious programming and conditioning of our environment and growing up, which create our beliefs, then that's how, you know, we have this stigma that sales are dirty or, you know, like mm -hmm. the dirty car salesman or whatever. But the other thing that you brought up that is so important, and it's what I call or refer to as the 80-20 rule. So for example, those programs you took were giving you 20%, the strategy or the mechanics on how to sell. They're telling you the how, but if you don't have the 80% belief or the psychology behind it, the mindset, the certainty, the clarity, the vision, the focus, that 20%, that's probably why, what led you to, all right, well, I got to take another course. I got to take another course. And I guess that's what I find people doing, or I call them the self-help junkies. They keep going to the next seminar or the next program, trying to get the strategy or formula. If they just understood, it's the 80% of the coin that needs the, the tweak, right? I agree with most of what you just said. So um, to me, like there was a lot of, of 
inner work and a lot of mindset work that needed to get done. And, and on some of the courses were better about talking about that, but ultimately I needed one-to-one. I just, I needed that one-to-one accountability. And so I kept banging my head against the same wall and I should have figured out after the second group program that group programs weren't the best fit for me. Um, but the strategy was important because the, I did the money work, I did the, the mindset work on success and my limiting beliefs and all that stuff. And I went back like this particular course and I still found the, the way they did their sales script to be really unethical, you know? So mm-hmm. to me, I did need that mindset work because even if I had the perfect strategy without the right mindset and that confidence, it wouldn't have happened. You're 100% correct. But even if I had all the confidence and the right mindset, if I was still trying to sell, if all I knew was a way of selling that wasn't aligned with my values and my standards, that also wouldn't have worked. So how did you find what works for you? <sighs> so it was working, working one-to-one with people who also were more aligned with, um, with my values, you know, around sales. And they were like, they were willing to be like, oh, if, if that way of doing the sales doesn't feel good to you, then let's do it this different way. And they gave me that permission, you know, whereas in group programs, it's like, they want to, they want to defend the, the system at all costs, right? They can't say, okay, well, for you, you need to tweak this. They have to have maintain this thing of like, no, it must be done this way. Um, but I agree with you. And I heard you talk in another of your podcast about the personal growth junkies and business growth junkies. This is the same thing. If you're, if you keep going after strategies and you don't do the inner work, then nothing's going to work. If you don't stop and make yourself implement you can't just go to a weekend seminar and then expect your life is going to be different. You've got to take what you learn from that class, that course, that seminar, that live that you watch, and then go actually put it into practice in your life. Otherwise it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Two nuggets. We must, I think I really want to highlight there is you're right. I don't believe in one size fits all. Right. There are some things. Yes. Two plus two will always equal four. Right. right. But I, I agree. I actually, last year, I, I did a year long mentorship in this group coaching program on how to build a personal brand. And I did not resonate. I'm not saying their strategy doesn't work, mm-hmm. but it didn't work for me. And I think that's right. just, it's important to know. Mm-hmm. Don't, I love the saying, right? Don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole. Yes. Go find what works for you. But the second thing you notice, um, I think people think or want that quick fix. If I go to the seminar, then I'm going to be, then I'm going to know it. And Mm -hmm. you're right with, and I, trust me, one of my girlfriends and I, we were talking last night about how, you know, sometimes we just have off days or we both happen to have an off week. Mm -hmm. But what we talked about is how important our morning routine is because when we don't do our daily practices and we're not intentional, with our thoughts and energy, that's how we, we fall off track. So you're right. Implementing or what I say, doing the reps, like, you know, you want those bicep muscles, you got to do the reps. Right. So what does that look like for you? What are you doing? What is this daily mindset work that you do to keep you on track and keep going? Um, so I do, you know, at least 10 minutes of meditation. Um, I use the Holosync system. Are you familiar with them? Mm-mm. So it's, it's binaural beats. So it's, it's a, a thing you use headphones and it puts you into meditation, you know, and that's how I actually learned to meditate was using the system starting with it years ago. Once I was knew what it felt like to meditate, I, I'm actually able to do it on my own, but using the system, I'm able to go like a little deeper. And so, you know, it looks like at least 10 minutes of meditation. Sometimes I'll do a whole hour, you know, just depending on my schedule and um, gratitude, you know, writing out 10 things I'm grateful for and the reason that I'm grateful for them. Um, You know, reading, uh, reading really positive uh, business books or personal or spiritual growth books. And all of that is, is super important and doing it, doing it daily. I resisted that for a long time. Um, but I, and I found that, um, well, I just, I, even though I would tell people to do it and I know it works for people, for some reason, I had this limiting belief that it wasn't going to work for me. Mm. And so I was very resistant. And then, um, 
I had made some sales in my business and I was like, oh, this is great. This is wonderful. This is, you know, but then I hit like a wall and I wasn't making any sales anymore. And I kept doing everything, but nothing was working. And that's when I was like, oh, this is a mindset thing. So I started working with my current coach. And the second day that I really sat down and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this work. I'm going to do the meditation first thing. I'm going to, you know, read the books. I'm going to do the affirmations. And then I decided I was going to go for a run and I hate running, but I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this. Um, I was in the kitchen getting ready to go out the door and I got a notification and somebody I had talked to six months prior had sent me an email just then saying, Hey, I'm ready to work with you. <laughs> I hadn't spoken to her in months. And I was like, Oh, mindset. Well, so somehow in this work, what it sounds like, obviously you changed your energy, right? You yes. were in this low vibe, low frequency of these limiting beliefs. It's not going to work for me. And something mm -hmm. shifted mm -hmm. to get you into, I guess, just more like that forward focus, that momentum of, well, you tell me. It was really like almost like magic like it really because I hadn't reached out to her I didn't there wasn't a direct correlation now I had done some good relationship building with her when I first spoke with her but she wasn't ready to invest she wasn't ready to make the change and um I could tell you know from her energy that she's a very like if I had followed up with her relentlessly she never would have worked with me and so I had touched yeah. base with her a couple of times you know but I, I really hadn't talked to her. So for her to come out of the blue like that, you know, on the second day that I was really applying these new concepts, it was like the universe was like, yes, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And this is why. And, um, you know, I've gotten a lot more clients since then. And I got I have my best sales month ever in December. And I know that it's because I'm doing this work because I was doing showing up. I was actually showing up more. I was actually doing more marketing um, in like August and September when I wasn't getting anything than I did in October, November, and December. And I got a lot more sales. So definitely was an energetic thing. I'd love to talk about that because especially if other entrepreneurs are listening or somebody that who wants to start their own business, they have this passion desire, but yeah, I haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. Number one, let me just tell you, you're never going to be ready. Just start. Yep. I but I want to mention on that, I guess what I heard from you is especially, and I've been in the space too, you know, we're quote taught, you got to post 16 times a day, use these hashtags, try to beat the algorithm, email marketing, and, and it's all this pushing and forcing and trying to control an outcome mm -hmm. where, like you said, you weren't, you weren't doing this pushing and forcing and trying and it happened for you. And the same has happened for me when I'm like hitting up my list and, and doing all that pushy stuff that doesn't feel good. I get nothing. And then quote, you're right out of the blue, I get connected with somebody or they heard my podcast and they reached out. Or I, I guess the important thing to know is people are watching whether or not you're aware. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that was um, one of the great things, I, you know, all these group coaches, group coaching programs that I did, um, even though I didn't get sales directly from doing them, I did get a lot of good out of them. You know, they just weren't what it, they weren't, didn't have what it takes. They didn't give me what I needed to get over the hump and actually start signing clients. But one of them, um, she talked a lot about how in the beginning, you know, you're not getting an engagement. And she's like, believe me, people are watching. People are watching and they're reading and, but they're just not commenting, you know? And she even talked about how most of the people that will become clients are kind of your ghost lurker people that never, like you have no idea who they are. And then one day they're like, Hey, you know, I was, I was wondering, you know, more about this. And you're like, I had, hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> right. So, yeah. You have to know that like people are watching, even if they're not engaging. And that's one of the reasons kind of on the flip side of that, that I make it a point, like pretty much any post that my, my face comes in contact with, unless it's something that I just cannot get on board with at all. I will at least give a like, a heart, you know, a comment, a gift, something um, just to, you know, just to bolster it for people, because especially when you're new, it is so disheartening. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess we've also been conditioned or taught to like, we're chasing the likes. And I got over that a while ago, because if I, 
if I was getting fulfillment from the amount of comments, likes, or engagement I got, I just realized that was the wrong thing that I was chasing. So, yeah, um, but I, I, I want to put out stuff that, you know, people can connect with and stuff that they can learn from it. And it's gratifying, you know, when something is getting some really good comments and, you know, that it's, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it fulfillment. It's satisfying when I see a post is getting a lot of engagement and, and people are like, oh, wow, yeah, I really get this. Or, you know, thanks, this is a really great tip. But yeah, to chase that, like you can chase engagement or you can have clients and they don't, just because you're getting great engagement doesn't mean that you're getting clients. And just because you're not getting great engagement doesn't mean you're not getting any clients. Right. Yeah. Well, so what I, I would like to shift and talk more about is this whole manifest consciously. Mm-hmm. And I guess my perspective or my viewpoint, my lens is that we are all manifesting every day, whether or not we're aware of it. And so you can manifest by default or you can manifest by design, which simply means to me is becoming aware of your thoughts and beliefs, being intentional with your day, like the morning routine, or just going through life's motions and and life is just happening. So what does it mean for you manifest consciously? And what does that look like? And, And when you are on the ball and you're doing these, the mindset work, what kind of things have come your way? Okay. So I agree with you completely. We're always manifesting. Um, and I was first introduced to Abraham Hicks and uh, Law of Attraction, The Secret, all of that stuff back in probably like 2004. And I was a mess. <laughs> I was a mess back then um, and, and not nearly ready, you know, for, for it. And I was taking all these classes and, you know, they're like, oh, well, just script out your day, you know. And I had so much internalized self-hatred that it didn't matter how positive I was. It, it wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. Like my conscious brain was like, yeah, this is going to be great. I deserve this. But my internal, you know, um, feeling was just that I needed to just go fucking die somewhere, you know? And I mean, it was, it was bad. It was really bad. And um, I remember being very frustrated at the time. Now, now manifestation people actually address, you know, the fact that if you have a lot of self-hatred and a lot of like, guilt and shame and just ick it, it's going to be very hard if not impossible for you to consciously manifest you have to do the mindset work do the inner work do the shadow work do the anger work and and get rid of that crap you know but at the time people weren't really even acknowledging that part of it and so um i remember i scripted a a perfect trip to chicago with my best friend and everything opposite happened. Like we fought for 24 hours. Like it was a total freaking mess. And I came back and I asked this um, woman, she had written a book. She was, she was in Atlanta and she did like weekly workshops. And I was like, listen, respectfully, I know this works, but it's not working for me. Can you please tell me, you know, what's going on? And she was very angry with me (laughs) for, and and I didn't mean it as a challenge. I was just like, Please help me to figure out what I am doing wrong. It's not what you're teaching us all. What am I, you know, doing wrong? And basically, you know, when you have a bunch of toxic people in your life and you're still a little toxic, you can't just law of attraction that stuff away. It wasn't my experience, at least. I had to be willing to do like the deep inner work. And now that I've done that and I don't have this, you know, secret buried feeling that I should really do the world a favor and go kill myself you know, um, now I can do the morning practice and I have positive people in my life and I can script for things and, and it actually does go that way, you know, but it's like when you're scripting and you're trying to control your best friend who is on drugs and is full of chaos and violence, it's not going to work, you know, but if you've done the inner work and then again, you've implemented, you've applied this stuff and, and you've changed your life. You've changed your environments. You've changed the people you spend time with. Then all of this starts to become a whole lot easier, you know? So this year, you know, I manifested a limo business and then, uh, that wasn't wherever it was really supposed to be. Uh, so COVID made it so that I had to stay home and really focus on my coaching, which is where my passion has truly been for nine years, you know? So um, this year I manifested a business. I manifested 
um, six soulmate clients who we were a joy to work with, who, you know, put in the work, got great results. Um, yeah, you know, have been, uh, you know, manifesting the body that I really want to be in, the health and the vitality, you know, um, it started out by just working out last year and um, started back with uh, Weight Watchers this year. You know, so the last month I've actually been doing like cleaning up my diet as well as, you know, working out and I'm losing weight faster than I ever have before. And I know that it's because I'm, I'm, I believe it's possible for me now. And I, and I really know to the core of my being that I deserve it. Okay. There's so much I want to unpack there. <laughs> so num- number one, to back it up a little bit, what is scripting for somebody who's never heard of that? So I don't know how you would define it. The way that I think of it is like journaling about something before it happens, okay. but journaling as if like, you know, I'm so grateful this trip to Chicago went so well, my friend and I had so much fun, blah, 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 you know, but it could be about anything. Um, I know a lot of people use scripting like daily, you know, they look at what they're going to do the next day and, and they use it. So, so for those listening, how I teach this is I call it to future riff as if. Mm -hmm. And so you go to a future date, it could be a week, 30 days, the end of year, whatever. And you just speak in past tense, how amazing it went, but -hmm. not only the thoughts and you have to be very detailed and descriptive emotions backing it. Mm -hmm. That's what I teach. Okay. So then what I want to ask you is, um, you know, 2020, I think was a challenging year for many. Understatement. Yes. (laughs) And I am so grateful that I had as much personal development and mindset work as I had, because otherwise I think I would have been a hot mess. But because I realized I stood back and I, number one, I focused on the controllables, which was me. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, okay, I don't know what any of this is for. Mm. And I, I stepped in, you know, the, the, I love the quote, life is happening for you. But as an example, COVID happened, right? It happened to everybody, but for you, it, it more or less forced you out of a business you weren't even into and quote, forced you the time in this space to go within and do this work to launch this business that lights you up. And so Mm -hmm. when we can find the gratitude and, and step back and stop trying to control and freak out, like it happened for you. Yes. And I, I wouldn't wish this whole situation on the world just so that I could get my coaching business started. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> like, but like I had, I had decided, I mean, I, I kept leaving coaching because I was so frustrated because I hated marketing and sales. I hated it so much. I love to help people. I hated the marketing sales part of it. And I had, I had a come to Jesus moment with myself at the Atlanta airport where I was, I was standing there. I was holding a sign waiting for somebody, you know, to come. And I was like, Heather, like your gifts are, are not being utilized here. This is, this is a waste of your gifts. Yeah. You're a good chauffeur, you know, and it's not that it doesn't take skill to be a good chauffeur because it does, but I've, I have all this life experience and all of these investments I've made in time, money, and effort and implementation of personal and spiritual growth. I'm not using that as a limo driver. I'm not helping the world in any way. And so I had, I really, I was like, you've got to get over the sales and marketing thing. And so I had made the plan and implemented the plan to get a coach and thank God I had finally gotten that one-to-one coach because six weeks later, the limo industry, my part of the limo industry was virtually just shut down because it was all like airport, you know, travel. And um, so I'm really glad that I had this plan, you know, and I had, I had really like, okay, this really is my calling. I keep trying to do other things. It's not working out. (laughs) Maybe I should just stay home and do this coaching business. Um, and like, in, and to, to your point about, you're glad that you've done all this work because otherwise it would have been a lot harder. So in 2017, my dad got a uh, autoimmune disorder and nearly died. Um, as he was recovering from that, a few months later, I found out I had breast cancer. And um, I had just bought the car for the limo company. And it was just, it was a giant cluster. And I, I held up through that. I didn't, I didn't break down. And it was because I have done so much work and I was able to respond rather than react to what was happening. And, you know, even though it was tough, um, 
I was able to, I was able to do it. And I know that like 10 years ago, I wouldn't have weathered that with nearly as much grace. Yeah. And then, and then 2020 happened and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> right. I'm kind of like, yes, I'm a badass. I don't need any more evidence that I'm a badass. I'm a badass. I guess. So I'm curious what happened for you in that one-on-one coaching that triggered you and shifted you out of this, oh, I hate sales and marketing. Because if somebody's not in your shoes, there's some area of life that they are resisting and keeping away from, but that's what like holds the key to their, what they want. So I want to help them bust through their own blocks. So what was the shift or what happened that you were like, you took on sales and marketing, you shifted your perspective, something happened. Yeah. So, um, when I, I knew, I knew from experience, I ended up working with two coaches simultaneously and I knew from watching them and observing them that they did not sell and market in sleazy ways. And so I was like, okay, here's some people that are being successful that I can relate to that aren't being sleazy. And so that opened the door for me to believe, okay, this is possible. Right. Mm -hmm. And then but there, there were things about that I, that I loved about the way they did things, but then there were things that didn't, I don't say that they're wrong, but they just weren't so aligned, but it gave me somebody to bounce ideas off of, you know, directly to, and have real permission. It just like, I know I didn't actually need permission from somebody else to create this on my own, but, but I needed it for whatever reason. Yeah. And I got the one-to-one coaching and then I had somebody in my corner that was like, they would tell me if I was screwing up, you know, or what I was thinking was like, really like, okay, Heather, you need to may, maybe rethink that. But they were very supportive of me creating this business from my own set of, of values and standards and desires. And when I did that and I started, you know, to believe it was possible, it's a mindset, and created this way of selling and started practicing with people, all of a sudden it became easier for me to show up. And I just did a post about this today, actually, it became a lot easier for me to show up and and actually post and do my marketing and be consistent about it. Because subconsciously before it was like, why show up and be consistent? You're not going to be able to sell these to these people anyway, you Mm -hmm. know? So once I was able to sell in a way that felt good to me, it became so much easier for me to show up because I knew that once I pulled in people that were a good fit. If they were, if I found out they were a good fit on a sales call, I knew I would be able to close them. So it made a huge difference for me. So ultimately it, it sounds like, well, one, obviously you shifted perspective, but maybe was it from sales and marketing and this pushing in, into I'm providing you content and I want to help. And here's, here's the way I can help you. I want to, you know, get you to where you want to be. So how, what was that tweak for you mentally or your approach? So I, so I had been really scared of sales and I had all these limiting beliefs and all this mindset stuff. And so for me, like the, the right, the right strategy plus the right mindset were so entangled. Like you couldn't just, you couldn't pull them apart. It's like, I had to come to them both at the same time that may not have been actually true, but that's how it happened, you know, for me. And so as I started to understand, like what was, as I started to calm down and to believe it was possible to sell to people with integrity and to treat them like human beings, you know, um, then I started to like relax and I started to understand like the sales psychology behind like why you ask these questions and what you're listening for and what you're watching for when you're speaking to someone. It's not just what they're saying, it's how they're saying it and what their body language is. And just this whole world of information opened up for me. And I realized that you don't have, if you, if you know what to listen for and how to ask questions to help this person really get clear about their problem and really get clear about what's possible for them and really get clear about what they're willing to do to get those results, because I 100% agree with you, there are no quick fixes, it's not really. Once I understood how to get all that information and to speak with this somebody, somebody on like a genuine human level about it and in this process, then I was able to say, okay, this is, this is how I'm gonna help you and I can really speak to their values. You know, like a lot of people maybe wanna lose weight, but they wanna lose weight for different reasons. And you can't talk to someone about 
oh, well, you know, it's all about a bikini body when that's not what they care about. What they really care about is being able to like have more energy, you know? So you have to understand yeah. like why people want things, you know? So that was a big thing. The other huge thing is I, I really hated the concept of overcoming objections. That's really gross to me. It feels like you're taking somebody's concern and just throwing it under a rug and being like, yeah, don't, don't worry about this. You, you need to do this. And that felt really gross to me. That's how I was taught in, in most of these trainings. And so I learned how to address concerns instead. And that energy was just much better. And now I don't get objections. It's really funny. Now that I know how to deal with them, <laughs> people don't object. <laughs> Yeah. And I think what I would love to add there is, and even when you brought up earlier, you know, you used to be around toxic people, yes. but when we have different energy and we're living in a different space, we're going to attract and magnetize ideal clients, partners, relationships, whatever. And I love the saying that you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. And what you think you deserve. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important. So, and this is something I actually asked you offline, but I'd love for you to share it. If okay. you could give humanity one message, like your billboard message, what would you tell people? I'm going to phrase it a little bit differently. Okay. But basically get to a point where you can respond to the world instead of reacting to it. And what allowed me to do that was getting in touch with um, the places that I was hurt, that I was angry and, um, ashamed and guilty and working through that, I used a, a, a structured journaling exercise and, um, had somebody go through that with me and help me get like full perspective and drop the victimhood and really process that stuff. And then this year I actually started using, um, some anger work, like physical anger work. So like doing a kickboxing workout, but with as you're punching like thinking about what you're mad at like really getting that stuff out of your body like not just getting it out of your mind mm -hmm. getting it out of your body and in doing all of that and then um the mindset work the meditation the learning to love myself now there's things that piss me off but I don't have to stop and think okay what would a good person do in this situation like or what's the smart thing to do in this situation like I automatically can just step back and think, okay, this is how I want to react, but that's not going to get me what I want. It's not going to make the situation better. How can I respond? Mm -hmm. And if that's, if that was something that people started learning at a young age, um, I, I'm going to phrase that differently. Once people start learning this at a very young age, we will live in a very, very different world. For sure. I love that. And so that's something, if you're listening, I would write it down. How can I learn to respond instead of react? And so yeah. I think sometimes it's even that because I still get triggered. I'm human. Sure. But to take, take a moment, take a breather and, and like before you react mm -hmm. or respond. So I guess respond there. But take, take, that, take that break moment mm -hmm. before you send the text or you bite somebody back or whatever. You know, just take a moment, take a breather. Yeah, but the beautiful thing is that if people will be serious, get really serious about facing their demons and doing the inner work, then it, it doesn't, you don't have to fight yourself on it. You're just like, okay. You know, you don't even have like that five minutes of like, I'm so triggered, I'm, ah, you know, and then you like calm yourself down. Like I'll feel irritated and I mean, I'll, I'll feel aggravated, but I, I don't have to hold myself back. I don't have to you know, talk myself down from the ledge, like Heather back away from the keyboard. You know, I could just be like, <sighs> take a breath. Yeah. Take a breath. Take a break. I would love to wrap up the interview and I have a few rapid fire questions to ask you. The first one being, what is a quote or motto that you live by? Don't talk about it. Be about it. Oh, so <laughs> powerful. And that I think that's actually something I have a weekly mastermind. We have our call every week. I love them. Just three of us, but that's, that's been a big um, saying for all of us lately is to do the work, to show up, to stop talking, you know, it's that whole action speak louder than words. So I love that. Yep. My favorite. It's actually, 
Uh, it's actually an old pimp saying. It's, a, it's very much a street saying. Don't talk about it, be about it when, when it's worded like that. <laughs> Second question, what is a book you're currently reading or highly recommend? Several people recommended The Magic by Rhonda Byrne. And I thought maybe it was a new book because everybody was recommending it. And it's not, it was came out in 2012, but I've been doing that gratitude practice. It's a whole book about gratitude. And it's really, it's the deepest gratitude practice I've ever come across. And it is magical. Cool. I will check that out. Final question for you. What advice would you give your younger self? Wow. Um, to find personal growth sooner, uh, to invest in, in uh, not just books, but actually going to retreats and getting one-to-one -one coaching sooner, because that's what really turned my life around. Um, I say that, that therapy kept me from jumping off buildings, personal and spiritual growth made me so that I didn't want to jump off buildings anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, would, would get into the personal growth and invest in myself like that sooner. Awesome. What a great note to end on. Heather, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, other Heather. <laughs> I guess I'm other Heather in this. Thank you so much for the show. Um, I've been listening to some of your other episodes and you, you're doing great work. It's, you have really interesting people on and um, really great stuff you're talking about and you're breaking it down in a way that's very digestible. 